What would happen if you combine an addiction to attention? I just joined the Mile High Club. And I know it doesn't count as the Mile High Club because I was in the airport, but I still joined it. I swear to God. Impulsivity. <laughs> and a completely unstable mental state. You guys are dumb as fuck, man. You guys are literally dumb as fuck. Well, you get a very unpredictable individual that will do anything he can possibly do to stay in the spotlight. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today we'll be examining the mental collapse of the legendary Fousey, his recent poor choices in the pursuit of relevance, and how his in over the top personality both built up and eventually burnt down his career in just one month. To fully understand why Fousey has become incredibly popular and controversial for over a decade, we first need to examine the few reoccurring themes throughout Fousey's journey on YouTube virality, outrageous stunts, and mental instability. Firstly, Fousey's videos have always blurred the lines between fact and fiction, which is part of why they were so popular. He helped pioneer the prank genre, and for a long time managed to fool viewers into thinking that the events on camera were completely real. You don't want my number? No, I'm good. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. This is your last chance, I'm gonna leave. What's up, bro? What's good? Oh, uh, what's good, man? Yo, what's up? How you been? I'm chilling, chilling. Yo, how Drake doing? Uh, Drake's good. He's actually working on his new album already. Y'all gonna invite me to another mansion party, man. Oh, uh, so you can see Nicki Minaj twerk again. Absolutely, bro. Ah. Yo, um, Weezy rematch Madden for real. Come on, man. He lost it to Lil Wayne and Madden and wants a rematch for $1,000. Get out of here. Fousey mastered the art of giving his audience entertaining or shocking social interactions they weren't entirely sure were fake or real. His yoga pants prank and the R-word experiment are among two of his most popular videos, gaining 52 and 25 million views respectively. This style of content allowed Fousey to garner over 10 million subscribers and half a billion views on his main channel, easily earning multiple awards along the way. Use of Erica! <laughs> This year I became one of the most hated YouTubers on the platform. That's maybe because I let Rice Gum punch me in the face or maybe because I came out and said 99% of the pranks on YouTube are fake. But I wanna say this, for a long time I looked at myself in the mirror and I based myself based on what I read on the comments. I felt worthless, I felt ugly, I felt gay, I felt that no, uh, that, like that just based on what they told me. But by 2017, the genre Fousey built his career on was revealed to be fake, and the image of authenticity that he had crafted was completely destroyed. A combination of dwindling views and fan backlash forced Fousey to disappear from the internet for over a year. This is where the video takes a slight turn, as I flew out to Salzburg, Austria to share today's sponsor with all of you. This is Holtzkern. Holtzkern creates uniquely designed watches, jewelry, and accessories that are anything but mainstream. Each piece is meticulously crafted from a selection of over 50 different natural materials, such as wood, stone, and nacre, offering a one-of-a-kind statement that's as individual as you are. Not only is Holtzkern the perfect place to get yourself a present, it also makes for an unforgettable gift for anyone special in your life. I personally got my girlfriend the Fritilli necklace, which is carefully crafted from nacre and silver. For myself, I selected the Cyclonic, Baritone, Tanuma, and the Badass 2 and I couldn't be more happy. I've been wearing my watches, bandlet, and glasses every day since. What I've shown you is only the tip of the iceberg. Using the link in the description, you can have a look for yourself. And on checkout, use code ANARCHIST15 for an amazing 15% discount on checkout. Now, back to the video. Upon returning, Fousey was fixated on turning his career around and was going to do it by any means necessary. Which leads us into the second major theme in Fousey's saga, his outrageous stunts. Shortly after a fan meetup in Australia that only attracted 300 people, Fousey came up with the brilliant idea to host an event for the YouTube community that he claimed would rival Coachella, an undertaking that he would quickly regret. The days leading up to the event were filled with vague promises. Again, because I've been working on the biggest project of my life, all my energy, all my purpose, everything into this project. I am now, for the first time, going back to the city that destroyed me, Los Angeles, California, and taking back ownership of my life and my power and throwing the biggest event that Los Angeles has ever seen. Unrealistic expectations. I say that to say there are a couple of people I need to come to, to this event. DJ Khaled, as your Palestinian brother, your Arab brother, I need you to DJ this event. I got all your brothers coming from New York. All of them, hit them up, they're coming. 
I got your brothers coming from LA. They're coming. We need you, okay? We need you. Drake, I heard you're in LA this weekend. Mm -hmm. We need you. Will Smith, we need you. Jaden Smith, we need you on stage to perform Icon. And now we're gonna have all the biggest artists in the world in one arena and everybody in the world watching and we're spreading positivity and love and a positive message. There's one more person I need to come and that's LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James, I need you to get on that stage. And advice from close friends and family to reconsider what he was doing. Let's say the event takes off, right? And, and, yeah. and somehow the artists don't show up or people don't show up. And it's, a, and it's a flop and it's failed and it's seen as a fail. What happens to Fousey after that? On the 16th of July, 2018, Fousey's wish of cementing his place in YouTube history was granted, but it wasn't for the reasons that he originally intended for. The event would be called off due to a fake bomb threat, none of the celebrities he claimed were coming showed up, and Fousey had a critical mental breakdown in a parking lot. What I'm saying isn't hate. I'm just telling you as a man at 28 years old what I feel. You made me want to commit suicide last year. I wanted to kill myself because of all the attention you gave me. I rewatched videos going viral after the attention you're giving me now of you saying Fousey is the biggest piece of shit egotistical asshole on this earth. Fousey was never the same after this. He had manic episodes before, but none quite what we had just witnessed. Following this incident, Fousey began using his bipolar disorder and manic behavior as an excuse for his very public meltdowns or lapses in judgment. It was evident that Fousey was unable to handle the stress that came from being the center of attention, yet it seemed like attention was the only thing that he craved. Time and time again, Fousey would attempt to go viral with a public stunt of some kind, proceed to embarrass himself, and finally have a mental crisis over it. Whenever he did manage to gather some momentum in his career, Fousey would allow the fame and glory to overwhelm him, leading to yet another manic outburst. To many, it seemed like Fousey would never be able to break away from his self-destructive behavior. But was he really doomed to repeatedly revive and then kill his career? Was Fousey capable of learning from his mistakes and becoming a better creator? Or was he simply incapable of falling back into his old ways? Well, to answer that, we have to look no further than the events of 2023. On the 18th of May 2023, Fousey would upload a video titled, I gained all my weight back, time to transform. It was his first upload in nine months, and Fousey seemed eager to reconnect with what was left of his audience. Y'all, it's been so long that I don't even know how to talk to the camera no more. And that used to be like the easiest thing for me in the world. Like you put a camera on me, what's up everybody? <laughs> I, now it's like, hi, you guys are literally witnessing my first day back in nine months. Y'all might have been wondering where Where's Pussy? What's he doing? What's going on? You're literally witnessing my first day back in here right now. To the 80,000 people that watched the video, it appeared that Fuzi was making a genuine effort to put his life back together, with the first steps of this being his fitness journey, with comments stating, Can't lie, his life is motivational. Never seen someone get back up this many times. I'm here with you, Fuzi. And this guy is the most wild roller coaster ride of a human I've ever seen. The incredible highs and lows is hit with his mental and physical health multiple times is insane. Fans were hopeful that Fousey had finally changed, and for the next two months, they weren't disappointed. Fousey would continue to upload updates on his fitness journey in order to gain some authenticity and respect from his core fan base. He even went as far as launching his own fitness app so that his viewers could train alongside him. Well, now, it's time for me to reveal all my secrets. I am happy to finally be announcing the launch of my fitness app, Fit by Fousey. Fit by Fousey is gonna give you an opportunity to do exactly what I did for myself, for yourself. No matter where you are right now, no matter where you are in your fitness journey, this app is gonna help you get into phenomenal shape. It's safe to say that Fousey was building up some forward momentum, and he knew that he had to make the most of the positive sentiment from fans, because if he doesn't, he might never get the opportunity again. With a comment stating, This is cool and all, just don't give up on this and switch lanes, like you usually do. When I'm ready to go hard, I'll def try your app. On the 1st of July, Fousey took the format from his daily fitness challenge and applied it to other areas of his career, such as streaming on Twitch for 24 hours a day, every day. Yo guys, I've been live for over 75 hours. I'm live right now on Twitch. I'm about to live stream my real workout. I'm doing the Super Saiyan 2 workout live. If you wanna watch me work out live, click this link, 75 hours live. That means they've watched me sleep, they've watched me eat, they've watched me go to the bathroom, everything. Click this link right here to see me live. 
Throughout the month of July, Fuzi would keep his stream entertained as he traveled across the US to find a worthwhile situation to either entertain or inspire his audience, such as helping random people he met. Do you have cash app? Yeah, yeah. someone said fuck yeah. I, I'm gonna send you 500, cause I know, no, 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 it's okay. Let me do that for you. Cause I understand the dopamine high of hearing that you're gonna get a 500, then that's such a cruel prank. No problem, give me your, please, 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 for me, for me. Fred, where are you going after the 500 bucks? The strip club. The strip club. Woo! -hoo! Throw that money for A. Okay. Woo! Oh! Fred gets oh, down. No. no. Tell him I recognize him. Is it working? Fred, here you go. No. Hold on. Oh okay. wait. No so they way. said gone again. Yeah. You really did no. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why is it gone? No, that's not. It's on. Oh. No problem, brother. I hope that helps. I'm sorry for their prank. Thank you. You got it. You and partying whenever he could. Fuzi was making a comeback, and other creators like Ethan were taking notice. On the 19th of July, Fuzi would make an appearance on the H3H3 podcast. Whilst live, he would share his story and discuss his recent redemption arc. Friday, Fusi Tube is with us, obviously, and I've always wanted to have you on the show, so thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Let's go, yeah. G7 times H3. <laughs> thank Let's you. go. And um, on Friday, we had such a great time. Watch, it was so surreal. All the comments were about like that Fusi clip was was this Fusi segment was so insane. They watched it like three times back. We were trying to save your life mm -hmm. because you were going to live stream through TSA checkpoint. And I feel like did we get through to you? You did. Um, before I even say that though, I want to say thank you so much for even addressing anything of me on the podcast because what you've done for my subathon right now, like I can't thank you enough. Like I did a poll today. Are you guys G7 members or H3 members? And it was pretty even. That's so thank I, I, you so much for what you've done for Absolutely. Me. Thank you. Fuzi would go on to discuss various aspects of his life that he'd never publicly shared. His mental health challenges at various points in his career. Were you you were you in a manic state at that yeah. time? Yeah, yeah, induced by Adderall. Induced by Adderall. So what? I mean, I, I I remember the diagnosis at the time seemed to be that you have like bipolar and that you were in some kind of manic manic state. But but you said that was a mixed diagnosis. So when I was 18, I was in college and I had my first nervous breakdown. I was in the library open my laptop next thing you know my heart's palpitating i'm sweating i'm like what the fuck is going on mm. pack my bags run home scared go in my room like shivering go to the therapist for the first time see a psychiatrist all it took was i think one or two evaluations and she goes yeah from what you said you're bipolar and i took it i took it around with it mm. for my whole life even took my polar medication everything <clears throat> 2021 after the reality high incident where I got knocked out by Bryce Hall mm -hmm. I get sent to a rehab in Karen Pennsylvania and they do a 30-day intense eval mm. with many therapists daily everything and at the end they gave me my diagnosis and they said Yusuf you have no signs of bipolar you're severely depressed you suffer from depression but no signs of bipolar mm. and I and I've always thought that because July 15th was the only well, manic thing I've ever had. Yeah, that, you know, it's highs and lows. I don't yeah. have any highs. I only have lows. <clears throat> mm -hmm. How we lost a lot of money. Well, it ended up, I ended up losing it all of it because going to rehab, I went to two mental institutions in the last nine months. Mm. The first one was just a 10 day one. And that one was like $25,000. Oh wow. And then the one I did, um, which was a 30 day one, was it a 30 day or 17, something like that more recently was, I forgot, but upwards of there. And then ending up having a money here, money here, money here, money here, money here. It was all gone by the end of it again. I always wondered, um, you rented out the Greek for this big show. Mm -hmm. How much did that cost you? So here's the thing with that. I paid out of pocket everything. I think the Greek theater alone was like 300,000 something. Yeah. But then also paid all the artists first class flights to the oh, LA and their entourage and their bottle service oh, for the yeah. hotels, everything. Craziest thing about it. Event gets canceled due to a bomb threat. Yeah. You would think Ticketmaster and Live Nation would say, yo, it got canceled due to a bomb threat. Wasn't your doing. Let us give you another date. But I was with a very, 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 very shady guy at the time. Mm -hmm. Actually, he burned Roman Atwood. He was Roman Atwood's ex-manager. Mm -hmm. I think 
that they gave him back a percentage of it or a portion of it, and he just left and never said so anything. So how much money were you out on that After all July 15th, yeah. I lost well over a million. Wow. Yeah. So that's how you kind of burned your your save. That was the first yeah. first big hit, yeah. And then after that, obviously my career is flatlined. And nothing so came of that, really. Nothing. It was just a total disaster. Just bad publicity. Yeah. So then that's a hell of a way my to career flatlined man. after that. Yeah. So at that point, it's like, <clears throat> what are you to do? And how he struggled with sex addiction for several years. Okay, so your sex addiction seemed like it was more about like the masturbating slash handies or were you sleeping with a lot of people as well i wasn't sleeping with a lot of people yeah okay so it was a different it was a different than what you yeah. think of you know i know i know a few people who are were sex addicts and i don't think people realize how devastating this addiction is mm -hmm. it, it the people that i've seen who are sex addicts they cannot maintain a relationship they lie about everything they hurt so many people it is really 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 such a damaging addiction for them and the people around them mm -hmm. that I don't think people realize that, mm -hmm. you know? That's why the first time I went to rehab, I think I was 28 mm -hmm. and it was for my sex addiction. Nobody knew why I was going. Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell anybody, but all the men there were older. Mm -hmm. They all looked at me and said, good on you for being here this young. Good on you. Cause they were like 65 still going. Yeah, probably their whole life was ravaged yeah. from it. It's, it's such, it's so, when it takes control over you, it is so, it's, it's, wow, it's unbelievable. I've never felt that type of autopilot in my life. Right. And so how did you get uh, control of it? Years, mm -hmm. years, years, years. Um, finally doing the proper therapy, finally understanding why am I like this? And his relationship with Keemstar. When Keem rides for you, when Keem likes you, he f***ing rides for you. This guy texts me like the other day, I sent him a clip of the July 15th, me crying about it on stream. And I said, post this on drama alert. Instead of saying, yeah, yeah, 100%, this is gonna get numbers. He said, are you sure you want me to post this? I said, what do you think? He said, I don't think you should. What do so, you want him to post? I cried on stream about July, on July 15th this year. I finally let oh. cries out. And I, I sent him the clip and he didn't want me to post this. So when he, he rides for you, didn't think it would he get rides numbers. for you. But I'm gonna admit this. You know what I said in therapy about him before? Mm. When I was best friends with him? Mm. I said, I feel like I became best friends with my abuser. That's what I, that's how I felt. It was almost like a Stockholm thing. That's what I, that's, I, I had to deal with that in therapy for a long time. Because my relationship with him, like I was on top of a car saying, you made me want to kill myself. Yeah. But I want to say, Keem treats me really good and he really cares for me. He does. Yeah, until you say something just a little bit off. And then he tries to ruin your fucking life. After so many years of not confronting his problems, Fuzi was finally being open about his struggles and was grateful to his audience for his success so far. I'm not setting expectations that this is forever. Mm -hmm. I will still be so grateful for what they did get me to. Mm. And I'm sure, like, regardless, if I had 3,000 subscribers a month, that, all I want, people ask me like, do you want money again? Do you want this? I don't want supercars. I don't want jewelry. I don't want clothes. But I want enough money to be able to go, because in my culture, you have to speak to the girl's father. I want enough money to be able to go up to a girl's father and say, I want your daughter's hand in marriage. And when he asks me, can you financially support her? Say yes. This interview serves to not only give Fuzi a chance of redemption, but also exposed him to Ethan's very active fan base, many of whom were willing to give Fuzi a second chance with comments stating, this dude is just sitting here going over some of the biggest regrets and mistakes of his life with such honesty and humility. The amount of self-work it must take to get to that place is so impressive. As well as, Fuzi is on stream crying right now, saying how thankful he is to the H3 family and calling his mom and dad to tell him how happy he is. I never thought bringing Fuzi on would become such a wholesome thing. I hope Fuzi can come on again because I think he just got lost in the source, but is a really good guy deep down. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing, as Fuzi's Twitch account would receive a suspension for sexually suggestive content only two days later. But this hardly affected Fuzi's numbers on the platform. By August, Fuzi had amassed 33,000 subscribers, and his streams were averaging around 7,000 viewers. Fuzi had gotten everything he wanted and more, positive publicity, an audience that wanted to support him, and rapid success on a platform other than YouTube. What more could he possibly ask for?
But like most good things, they must all come to an end, as Fuzi's renewed success would once again be tarnished by his own poor choices. On the 6th of August 2023, during one of his live streams, Fuzi would encounter a lone woman at a bar shortly before boarding his flight. Sensing an opportunity for engaging content, Fuzi decided to spark up a conversation with her. I'm not, I'm a great person. I can tell. <laughs> how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm so good. But I have like five hours. My name's Yusuf, what's yours? This is Sarah. Sarah? Hi, Sarah. Yeah, I got three hours. You vaping? Sure. Yeah, I'm just like ghost smith. I'm writing it. <laughs> Now, it's worth noting that the woman in the video was intoxicated by the time she met Fuzi. <laughs> one race I haven't been with is a white girl with blonde hair, I swear to God. I don't know why. I like, I like, like, uh, my, my, my last boyfriend was like a light skinned guy. I liked it. Light skinned? <laughs> yes. like and the fact that people were treating him as a celebrity only further shifted the dynamic between them. Toronto. So I guess my assistant said that I made her book this flight. <laughs> I tried to blame my assistant and fire her. She said, hold on, bitch, you booked it. I said, all right. <laughs> Whatever. But none of that stopped the pair from flirting and exchanging more personal details about themselves. Wait, Mary. Can you follow my Instagram? I want to yeah. be friends with you. Yeah. I mean, mine is kind of like old. I, I wish you were coming to LA, your energy is so Which then led Fuzi to take things a step further. Can I kiss you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you too. Can I get a kiss? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A few minutes later, the woman revealed some shocking details about her past after showing Fuzi a tattoo. Yeah. Two babies. Dollar and muffin. Dollar and uh, muffin. tiger. Oh my god, it's like a real And then the rest are on my legs. <laughs> and the other one's right above my dick, so you can see them. I got one right here too. Can I see it? Oh my god. What does that mean? So. That's the dude's name. <laughs> Sarah, I can't be with you now. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. No, I, so. Is that your baby daddy? No. Sarah! Listen, what listen. the fuck? I thought we had something. Listen, listen. Um, so I got, sold, I got sold into the sex trade. You got sold into the sex trade? I actually name. care about this shit because I'm like an advocate yeah. for like against sex trading and all that shit. In response, Fuzi decided to send $300 so that she could provide for her kids that weekend. He also shared her cash app with the stream so that they could help as well. Alright, guys, this is her cash app if anybody wants to bless her. Chat, I trust you. If the encounter ended here, then this would have been another very positive moment for his career. He had helped a trafficking victim and got his chat to pitch in, allowing all parties to be better off for the interaction. Well, that was until Fuzi decided to return from quote, buying her snacks, unquote, and said this. Uh, Find that out. Happen. You sure? Yeah. You swear? <laughs> I swear. Give me a kiss if you're honest. I see I'm going to kiss her so much. I don't give a fuck, y'all. After this, Fuzi would take the girl off camera. Can you watch her stuff for a second? Make sure nobody takes anything. I got you, but thank you, brother. I'm going to turn it to you, all right? I'm going to go walk with her. Where a while later, he would return like this. Sorry, sorry. I just joined the Mile High Club. And I know it doesn't count as the Mile High Club because I was in the airport, but I still joined it. I swear to God, I swear on everything I love. I swear on everything I love. I just joined the Mile High Club in the airport, in the men's bathroom. I swear to God, Lola, Lola, I had to confess, I couldn't hold it for a fucking second. I didn't go to buy her no fucking snacks. I joined them. A statement that he would immediately regret and try to take back. Sorry, I shouldn't have shared that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm lying. I'm lying. By the way, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a huge joke. 
It's a huge joke. It's a huge joke. I'm typing I'm sorry in chat. It's a huge joke. Within a few short minutes, Fuzi had ruined an otherwise wholesome moment with his impulsive actions. Actions that would probably kill his career once again. To control the situation in the chat, Fuzi's moderators began deleting comments that referred to what just happened. But it was too late. News about Fuzi's latest screw up spread like wildfire. At scale right into the news, FuzzyTube is being accused of taking advantage of a drunk girl who was the victim of sex trafficking. Yeah. This all started when FuzzyTube was in an airport waiting for a flight. He goes to the bar at the airport, runs into this girl that he meets for the very first time and does this. Roll it. I have a Discord, right? Mm -hmm. With like 8,000 members. Can I send them a picture of me and you kissing? Yeah. To piss them off? Thank you. <laughs> They're gonna cancel me for this. I don't care though. I have a boner right now. With the girl being drunk, she goes and starts opening up about her life, how she used to be sex trafficked. Roll it. Um, so I got so Transitioning from scripted content to IRL streaming only increased the stress on Fuzi's mind, causing many of his darker tendencies to resurface. Keemstar had warned him about this beforehand, and now, being the one covering another manic episode, only strained the relationship further. However, Fuzi's current priority was reconciling with his viewers. He attempted to frame the entire experience as a moment of weakness and tried to gain sympathy with a tweet quoting, I'm currently on a plane home. Yes, I spiraled. I'm going to call my therapist as soon as I land. Thank you for keeping me in check. I need sleep, I need rest, I've lost the plot and need to find it. He also released a video titled, I Messed Up, to give a pseudo apology for what happened. This shit was just for fun. I was just at home, laughing with my supporters on Discord, joking around, um, eating, doing like little e-dates, having fun, and we were building a strong community. And the clout, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna take accountability and say it. the clout got to me. And I realized like, oh shit, you're popping, popping, cuz like you could really do something right now. So I started being more grandiose, started being more loud, more obnoxious, more angry. Like everything that I used to do in the bits normally, cuz for people who've watched me for this entire 36 days, you know that everything is pretty not everything but like you get what i mean everything is a bit so like even when i'm talking to someone when i'm doing this when i'm doing that it's all a heightened version of reality but it's not reality and that's why everybody around me has so much fun because it's like it's such a dopamine high well i am high and drunk off dopamine more than i could ever fucking imagine and i need to slow down um the incident at the airport wasn't the only thing he had to worry about. A few hours after the video was published, Fuzi would receive a three-day suspension on Twitch for hateful imagery. You'd think with Fuzi's career being on thin ice that brands would want to stay away from him, but that strictly wasn't the case. During his Twitch suspension, Fuzi announced a $15 million streaming contract with Kick. Guys, I haven't posted a video since the news of my $15 million Kick deal got announced. First of all, stop pocket watching, cuz. Be proud of me, man. There's enough abundance and money to go around for everybody. That's why you should never be jealous of someone else's success because God has enough in this world for everybody. You just have to be supportive of somebody. When your friend gets something, don't tell your friend congratulations, but secretly in your head think, he doesn't deserve that, I deserve that. Why does he have what I want? Because then he's gonna get more and you're gonna lose more. When something happens for somebody, be proud of them and more will come to you. It's the law of the universe. First of all, God is good. I spent nine months not making a single dollar. I was depressed. I was in two mental health hospitals. I tried to take my own life in one of the mental health hospitals and it was really bad. And alhamdulillah, I stayed praying. I stayed persistent. And now I got a multi-million dollar contract. I can retire my parents and I can pay off my parents' home and I can invest and use the money wisely now. Um, I just want to thank Kick for betting on me. They're really nervous right now because they're saying, what if he- For the first time in a long time, Fuzi six success wasn't negatively affected by the drama surrounding him. It wasn't like July 15 or his losses in the boxing ring. This time, Fuzi was able to avoid fading into irrelevance. The only thing that stayed constant was his feud with Keemstar, with a tweet quoting, At 
Fuzi. It's crystal clear that you're manic again, and as mad as I am, I have sympathy. Was there for the first time, so I can see the parallels of what's happening right now. You're lying to yourself if you actually believe you're playing a character. You need to absolutely get in contact with your advisors who are helping you when you were at your low earlier this year. They will tell you the same thing that I'm telling you right now. And Keemstar would make a follow-up tweet to reveal what actually happened behind the scenes. With DMs quoting, Stop streaming. This shit is so goddamn bad. I just learned the context of all this. Okay, I'm on my way to get a mental health eval once I land. There are videos all over Twitter. Bro, you clearly took advantage of that girl. It looks so fucking bad. I didn't do anything with her, Keem. My girlfriend is going off right now at me. She's seen it first. Naturally, Fuzi denied the allegations and shared his own twisted side of the story. Keemstar, Keemy Dreamy, my brother, Daniel. You just said in your Twitter video that I called you and said I just fucked this girl in the bathroom. I just posted the text proof that my first text with you right after the incident was Keem, I didn't do anything with this girl. That's fucking low even from you, dog. Not even Deaf Noodles would do some bullshit like you. The only reason all these fake news articles are posting that I got banned on Twitch because of sexually assaulting a girl is because Drama Alert spread that fake narrative. You made me want to kill myself, Keem. I was your friend for so many years because I was terrified of you. Everybody knows you're the biggest person who can get someone canceled. If you're on Keem's good side, your career's good. And you took care of me for years, Keem. Even with everything I exposed, I did it with love. But do not try to say I called you and say I fucked this girl. That's low, Keem, even coming from you. I love you. I love Happy Punch. Have a good life, brother. I'm setting a boundary between us now. I'll contact you when I'm done with this manic episode. If that last statement was anything to go by, then it's obvious that Fuzi was indeed having an episode. Keemstar even added a clip of Fuzi's therapist mentioning the current predicament. Well, you, you, you've been sober until that uh, thing in the airport, I know that. Right? Love you, Susie. Yeah, I love you. Bye. I'll see you Monday. Bye. Tensions between the two would ultimately reach a boiling point during a call on Twitter. When you told me to stay away from Nadia, when you told me to stay away from people who are using me for clout, I remember. Yes. So listen, I think me and you had a phone call that you don't remember. You can prove it by looking at your phone. I see a phone call for one minute, Keem. I'm not going to prove that I said I fucked a woman. When I swear to God, when I swear to God on my fucking dead fucking grandpa and my dead dog that I didn't fuck this woman. But do you give a fuck before Drama Alert goes and posts that shit? Fuzi wasn't concerned with arguing his innocence. Instead, he wanted to make sure Keem looked just as guilty as himself. It didn't matter to Fuzi if people saw him as a horrible person. He still had a platform and was more than willing to slander anyone that tried to call him out. What I want to say is he's been supporting me my whole career. He has the chance to talk to the number one person on IRL streaming right now. And he's going to sit here and really take his chance to try to give me shots and get me canceled. He's wasting time. Ask me how to make money. Ask me how to motivate yourself. Ask me how to get off coke. Don't waste your time talking about bullshit. You're talking to the king right now. Respect Wait. him. Respect Take him. his recent trip to Vegas, for example. He disrespects fans and asked him about his recent drama. We all see what went down with Keemstar. Are you guys ever going to be homies again? Or? Hey, I'm going to tell you something. If you had the chance to interview Fusi too, you could have asked me for life-changing advice. You exactly. chose to ask me I about have drama. I have this interview's you. over. Have a good really? day. No. Lashed out on stream. Smart. You think you're perfect? You're not. You're far from perfect. You're a fucked up ass. I think I'm perfect. You said you were gonna fucking do that. I dude. think I'm perfect. I just prayed and cried to Allah and asked him for forgiveness for all my shortcomings and sin. He's been sitting in the restaurant the whole time. I thought you left to get the ox portal. No, you guys left. <laughs> Fuck all of you. You Well. <laughs> Even turned on the people closest to him. Somebody going, hope you're doing well. Dude, I'm just 
just sending this message um, out of concern. I can't verify it or know that it's true, and I hope that it's not. But just watching your Twitches and your Instagram, I have a bad feeling. Less than a year ago, you said less than a year ago, within a year, you were in the pits of the pits, so depressed. Fuji was turning a lot of people against him, especially the people that had direct contact with him. Getting thrown out of restaurants and getting banned from hotel chains had become a frequent feature in Fuji's streams. You getting bomb threats? You want us to leave? I can't turn it. I'm not doing anything. I can leave. Somebody, this is what happened. Somebody drove by and saw him, yelled at him, and put him over to I'll leave. It's okay. You seem like you're going to cry. I don't want to hurt your feelings. It must be what it is. Nobody's doing a bomb threat, man. Wake up. Nobody's doing a bomb threat. It's a 13-year-old at home trying to scare you. Don't cry. Somebody called in a bomb threat in 2018 and made me lose millions of dollars. They're doing this fuck with me, not you guys. I don't want the food, by the way, and I'm not paying for it. It just came out. No, no, no. Fuck this restaurant. I don't want the food. I don't know why you're laughing. You guys are kicking me out. Naturally, this level of narcissism sparked resentment in the hearts of his viewers. Many of his 100,000 subscribers that engaged with the streams wanted to see Fuzi fail, and rumors about his kick deal not falling through would circulate on social media. I don't care what happened. I could lose my kick deal. I swear to God, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I could lose my kick deal. I could get banned from Twitch. I could get banned from Rumble. I could drive Uber for the rest of my life. I'm going to drive that Uber blast and put on knowing that I just took over the internet again. I'm good. Kick doesn't have to pay me another dime. Aiden texts me, this is bad. I already know what's coming. Alhamdulillah. I ain't mad. I ain't stuttering. I'm good. I'll grind for my shit. I could do this shit on my own. I don't need their money. I don't need a corporation. I don't need nothing. I'm doing this shit on my own. At first, I was scared to lose my kick deal because it was all I had. Now I understand, I am the power. They need me, I don't need them. If they're gonna kick me out because of this shit, cool. The two main points behind these allegations is that Kick is yet to make a tweet to fully endorse him and his reaction on one of his latest streams after his mom asked about the deal. Mama, you have no idea how much the deal is. You, are, you have no idea how much money we're talking, Mama. On the 23rd of August, Fuzi stated on stream that he'd been off his medications for 48 hours and needed an evaluation. They're sending me to a mental health hospital when I get back from Miami. Why? 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 Whoa. I just have to do an eval and slow down and I've been off medication for 48 hours. No, who the fuck is doing that? No, you don't. I've been off medication for 48 hours and the Deem hasn't got me my medication. I need to be medicated. Wait, why are you going to a fucking hospital? Don't do that. For an eval. Later on stream, Fuzi would receive a call to his hotel room from a troller named Ganvel, who had been harassing his family and doxing his locations in the past. But Fuzi wouldn't take the harassment lying down. At this point, he had simply had enough, and this is when he snapped. Oh, you like doxing too? Hey, I know where you are right now, and I live here, buddy. Come over here, bitch. I swear to God, I'll kill you. I swear to God, you pull up to my house right now, I'll stick a knife 10, uh, 10 feet in your fucking throat. I literally can slice it down to your business and chop it off. Yeah. Following this, he made what may have been one of his worst mistakes yet. He called the police and faked a hostage situation. He has weapons, yes. He told me to pull up. I told him he's gonna die. I said, well, lying to my God. Do you see the weapon, sir? He's not here, man, but he knows my address. He called my hotel. Okay, so the person, okay, so the person is not there with you, but they're calling you and making threats. I'm in a hotel room, nobody knows my location. He called my hotel room number on his own. Do you get it now? You know if he was on his way right now and he had a gun, I would be dead and he would still be asking me questions? Send the fucking cops. I have to ask Send the cops. They're able to help you. I'm not gonna argue. There's a gun to my head right now. There's a gun to my head. Oh, ma'am, 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 he left. 
Ma'am, he left. There's a gun to my head. Help, help, get them. Help, my Ma'am, Intercontinental, what's my room number? Help, tell me. 2027. That's what I have to do to get help? It's crazy. Following this, the police would arrive to Fuzi's hotel room. All right, so just explain to us a little what happened. Okay, I'm a live streamer. Okay. These cameras don't turn off. They're live 24-7. I am the most viral man in the world right now after Andrew Tate. Okay. Okay? And what happened? I've been getting swatted everywhere. Bomb threats. Fans call. Everywhere. They're trying to stop my cell phone. Listen, they're trying to stop my train. God is leaving this shit, okay? I'm spreading a message. I'm powerful. I'm fucking powerful. At what time did this... So listen, this guy calls my room right now. I'm chilling. I'm getting my room ready. I have a girl coming over. Oh, okay. And he, you guys don't even seem like you're serious about this. Are you guys going to do anything? We're recording. That's what I'm recording. What are you guys doing? Are you going to arrest him? Why is in their cars out looking for him right now? I have his address. Where's his address? Yo, where's the security? Get my security in here, please. You guys are just standing there doing nothing with your hands out. This is Miami Dade Police. Yo, what are you talking about? I'm being serious. My life's in danger, and you're sitting here staring at me. Why does nobody work hard in this world? Come Why am I the only? One? You're out. You're not gonna protect me. You're on camera. You fuck. What is it? Is somebody called on him? I'm out. I'm out. He just went out. Give me. Hey, chill out. Give me a story. Tell me a story. Dog. I'm live streaming. I'm the most famous guy on the internet right now. Okay, cool. So a guy calls my he calls my mom yesterday okay. and says I'm gonna slit your throat. He calls to, to my mom. Okay. No, my mom's throat. Okay. He calls my room today. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me again. Remember me? Mm -hmm. He posted a video. He was on live yesterday calling my mom. I have his face, everything recorded. Okay. He goes, remember me? He threatened my life tonight. Okay. He said exactly where I am out loud, room, everything. I literally told him, if I see you, I'm sticking a knife nine inches in your neck and I'm slatting it down your penis. He gave me his address. And how does he know where you're staying at? I don't, he's a stalker. Okay, and who is this guy? I don't, don't know fucking Peter. know. How do you want us to look for him if you don't know where he's I have his address. What is his address? I said grab my security 20 minutes ago. The police arrest Fousey. You guys are dumb as fuck, man. You guys are literally dumb as fuck. Oh, yeah. hey, record this. Security, come in here now. Yo, for my protection, come in here. He can't come in. Y'all are fucked. I'm suing all y'all. My life is in danger and you arrest a Palestinian Muslim who's viral? Are y'all dumb or are you stupid? Do you like your job? You're fucked. Hey! Yo, relax. Hey, free Fousey! Hashtag free Fousey! The following day on the 24th of August, Penguin Zero, also known as Most Critical or Charlie, published a video titled, This Fousey Situation is Sad, in which he shared his thoughts on the entire situation. Come back as an IRL live streamer broadcasting pretty much every waking moment of his life on camera. And it is probably the worst thing that could have possibly happened to him. His streams blew up. He got all of the clout he'd, all, he'd ever dreamed of. And he immediately became corrupted and poisoned by it. His broadcast went from the beginning being pretty wholesome and community driven like fun stuff from what I recall when he first came back. It was actually kind of cool to root for like an OG YouTuber stepping into a different ballpark and he seemed like he was in a much better headspace. But then his numbers kept going up. And as those numbers kept climbing, so too did his ego, until he reached his absolute boiling point and crossed the event horizon of maximal douchebaggery. He became his own worst enemy. He would insult people if they were poor, his main insult was about people's financial status and well-being. He became completely corrupted by clout. He was like Gollum, with the one ring ruining his mind. That was FouseyTube's precious attention. In just one year, Fousey went from an irrelevant creator that lost his career, all the way to making a sweeping comeback on Twitch and then later kick. 
However, he lost what little respect he had in the process. He managed to get a multi-million dollar contract with Kick, but he no longer had the support system that helped him get there in the first place. It's safe to say that money and fame got to Fousey, and is now allowing his unstable psyche to take over. The Fousey that seemed open and honest on the H3 podcast was no more, and instead replaced with an individual that only cares about views, no matter the cost to himself or others. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's video.